questions for the nice words and at the outset i wish to thank dr bansi sabu sir for inviting me and giving this opportunity to discuss the role of technology and that is 24 by 7 care with the help of technology in the field of diabetes we know the prevalence of diabetes is increasing globally and the same scenarios in india and india is currently home to 77 million diabetics and almost around 200 million patient or million people are at risk or are in the waiting for developing diabetes this is the usual story of a diabetic patient these uh, like if the patient is diagnosed as a diabetic be it symptomatic or asymptomatic usually he goes in the denial phase he doesn't accept that i can't develop diabetes it cannot happen to me and even if he accept then he starts with the indigenous medicine treatment some some like home based remedies or like he tries to control it or he hides it from the family members and, and then, then finally, finally he, he lends us lends to us for the treatment it there is a problem of adherence compliance it's not that good so ultimately what happens the, the the a1c of that patient do you have a pointer is almost high so like the average a1c in the current indian patient is the current indian scenario we see that is somewhere in more than 8 or 8.5 so this is the usual scenario and we know that the diabetes knows no boundaries, no, no uh, like the age, ge gender, rural or urban, socioeconomic status. So the diabetes is prevalent across all the parts, all the length and breadth of the country. And the irony of the story is that 75% of Indian population has a limited or a poor access to diabetes care. And in spite of the developments in the last 20 years in the therapeutic armamentarium for managing diabetes, the scenario is not good almost only less than 20 percent of the population or the diabetic population has the a1c of less than seven so almost around two-thirds of the patients in the country are uncontrolled or having an a1c of more than seven the reason for that the fundamental challenges for this uncontrolled a1c are the lack of accessibility there is a lack of access to the good diabetes care lack of access to the diabetologist or the specialist patient has to travel to the cities to the towns for getting the treatment or even getting the medicines or getting the investigations then lack of awareness people are not aware what is the target like the fasting ppg a1c what is the importance of controlling what is the role of prevention or the controlling the target a1c in the prevention of micro and macro complication and there is a lack of affordability because it is out of pay the patient has to pay for the consultation for the medicine for everything so the lack of awareness accessibility and affordability are the fundamental challenges in controlling or achieving the target a1c in the country so what can be done the digital technology based solutions for diabetes can be the answer to many of the challenges but they should work tandem with the traditional physician based diabetes care to make it effective we have seen the evolution in the technology so in the field of the diabetes technology and this has led to the emergence of virtual healthcare because like, there is an urgent need to address the rising burden of chronic disease and there is a development of smaller and cheaper mobiles the smartphones which has reached to the rural areas so the technology can help in achieving a good diabetes care so there is a new horizon in the public health that is the digital uh, health care and this can be a digital therapeutics mobile health health information technology telehealth devices sensors wearables and the personalized health care so and this digital therapy or the digital therapy can help in uh, from ranging from pre-diabetes or from the prevention to the even the tertiary care so in the pre-diabetes, the self-tailored digital intervention programs, mobile apps, wearables can help in the losing weight or for the diet uh, modification. In the diabetes treatment, for the adherence, for the compliance of the treatment, for monitoring, for SMBG, for managing the comorbidities like the engaging the patient and the HCP in the care, target should be identified, written out and monitored. And even the patient can be screened for treating or uh, prevention of the complications like the retinopathy and neuropathy can be done with the help of technology and that even in the rural areas, even in the outreach areas that can be helpful to that particular patient. And how it works, basically like, the, like in the, when a patient comes in the digital platform, the digital ecosystem, the, the data points are collected, they are analyzed and then, then on the basis of that these data sets, this uh, review of this data, the, the artificial intelligence based or the machine learning based programs can be made and this will help in personalizing the treatment for that particular patient. So this is the, the this is the way the digital technology works for overall care of that particular diabetic patient and the machine learning and the artificial intelligence in the digital therapeutics can help in the in the uh, devising a customized and more tailored therapy or the regime. But it's not that easy. There are multiple barriers to use the virtual healthcare technologies in India. 
is uh, ranging from the technical constraints and the quality aspects, the literacy rate and the acceptance of the technology, lack of basic amenities, the even the internet or the Wi-Fi or the broadband, the financial unavailability, person's fear and unfamiliarity, particularly in the rural areas, perspectives of medical practitioners and support from the government bodies. But if we can take care of these barriers, we can uh, do wonders because India is the second largest mobile phone consumer worldwide. And if we can incorporate the digital technology in the diabetes care, this can help in the healthcare delivery, including health promotion, prevention, primary care, and even the specialized care in India. So what are the different types of diabetic technologies which we are using? We are using the SMBG, be it the uh, glucometer which has not connected, or even we have the connected glucometers like the app-based uh, connected glucometers where you can collect the data in the app and can see the graphical presentation or even you have the data of that uh, monitoring uh, graphs and data. Then you have a CGMS where, which, which helps in uh, assessing the glycemic variability or which gives you an information about your blood glucose every 15 minutes where you can assess that what food is affecting or causing how much hyperglycemia. So you can have these, these uh, visual presentation and then patient can be advised, patient can be counseled on the basis of that CGMS data. We are using these insulin pumps and pumps. Then you have this automated insulin delivery systems or the insulin pumps where the sensor can assess the level of the hyperglycemia and deliver the insulin dose according to that. Now the di digital health. The digital health, it plays an integral role in managing diabetes and it is defined as a system that combines technology and online coaching. So it provides the online programs that offer the lifestyle counseling to aid with the weight loss and even increasing the physical activity. This also include a health coach and can create a small group of similar patients so that patient can be counseled by that health coach and can keep the patient the target or helping the patient for the dietary modification, for lifestyle modification or even for the weight loss. So with the help of the apps or the digital health, we can modify the lifestyle that is diet and lifestyle. We can go for something like fitness trackers. I am sure you all, many of us are using that, the fitness, fitness trackers, the step counts <coughs> and also the, uh, the keeping track on the weight. And then monitoring. There are glucometers which are connected with the smartphone and then you can do a monitoring. The app based where you can has, have the insight on the uh, monitoring part that how your blood sugars are doing. And even you have incorporated estimated A1Z on the base of that SMBG values. There are some apps like, like if you see this, this is a, from the Beto app that where you have the, like suppose there is an SMBG triggered uh, phone call from the coach if the patient has a hypoglycemia there is an immediate call from the coach wherein the patient is being advised how to manage this hypoglycemia at home even the patient is having hyperglycemia or the severe hyperglycemia over a certain cut off point patient is being advised how to manage it so the apps not only helping just uh, on the basis of AI or machine learning but also there is a human touch wherein a coach is calling to the patient on the basis of the hypo or hyper and advising to manage that, this at home. Then comes the telemedicine. It is a technology which is like being now being uh, frequently accepted and initially before COVID this was not uh, very much in use or was, was not organized but during COVID time telemedicine has come as an important tool for helping the patients particularly those who are, those who are in the home isolation or those who are in the uh, outreach areas. So the video consultation in the healthcare is now an upcoming uh, trend and the patients have the acceptance from the patient, from the government, and now the government has formulated the guidelines for the telemedicine also. What are the clinical evidences? This is a, a study of 163 patients where the effective, uh, it was found that this smartphone app was effective in managing diabetes. And <coughs> this is the uh, real world data from the uh, retrospective analysis of a, st a study in the Northern India of almost around more than 7,000 patients where it was found that there was a 9.9% reduction in the preprandial, 9.2% reduction in the postprandial sugar levels and there was reduction in the hypoglycemia incidences by 60%. Because whenever we plan a management of patient of diabetes, we are targeting a management of hyperglycemia but we always fear the risk of hypoglycemia. If there would have been no risk of hypoglycemia, there would have been no patient with the A1C of more than 7. So hyper, hypoglycemia is always a concern when we are managing a patient of diabetes. Another study which was published in ATTD, there was a reduction in the, in within 40 days by using this, uh, this app, the smartphone, uh, this uh, smartphone app, there's a reduction in the postprandial hypoglycemia, reduction in preprandial, reduction in the fasting. So there, this was, this was study which was focused on management of hypoglycemia or prevention of hypoglycemia in patients on say, uh, the oral antidiabetics or even on the insulin therapy. This is the study from the US which has seen, uh, shown that the AI virtual health assistant 
and a consumer friendly glucose measurement has shown a consistent a1c reduction over a period of 24 months and this is the again study uh, which has shown that the reduction is a study which was done in more than 2000 patients has shown that the, there was a 80.74 percent reduction in the hypoglycemia events in patients who were using this beto smartphone connected digital diabetes care app this is the newer study which is the data under publication that the diabetes care program and which has shown in just three months the a1c reduction of 1.8 with the help of the coach with the continuous treatment lifestyle modification and patient counseling so the a1c reduction of 1.4 that means we know that what are the pharmacotherapy is doing but patient if well aware patient is being good educated and make aware of the like lifestyle modification or the exercise they can do wonders and they can do a reduction of even up to 1.8 percent so different across multiple platforms patient has a choice to cho uh, choose from the multiple smartphone apps there are multiple apps available depending on the on the like patient serv which services patient want to use online consultations daily health coach the weight loss the only the diet the exercise fitness tracker multiple platforms are available patient can choose from them according to his or her requirement so what we can say that the diabetes or the digital technology in the field of diabetes can help in expanding the ge geographical access to care that means it will take care of the lack of access it, it helps in improving the patient to provider ratio it helps in reducing the provider's burden it helps in improving awareness about diabetes it helps in reducing economic burden that it will reduce the patient's travel travel time and then the cost of the so like uh, the loss of uh, work and it helps in improving the clinical outcomes as we have seen from the clinical evidences so the fundamental challenges of lack of awareness lack of accessibility and lack of affordability can be taken care by the digital technology in the field of diabetes and if we talk of the future of digital health new therapies including implantable drug delivery systems automated closed loop systems and miniaturized non invasive glucose monitoring system or even non invasive uh, the uh, the contact lenses non uh, invasive variables they are on the way so they'll really revolutionize the management of diabetes uh, with the help of the technology so the new digital te health technologies will create a digital diabetes ecosystem where patient can take care just with the help of technology so the key takeaways like the health intervention for diabetes are heterogeneous and clinical effects are generally modest so barriers to adoption include cost sustainability and integration with healthcare system and if we can take care of that we can do a good work or we can achieve a good clinical outcome in patients of diabetes digital technology has a potential to expand access to reduce the uh, cost and uh, it can, it can uh, widen the approach more work is needed to assess which features promote clinical efficacy and patient engagement so that they can be incorporated more and more in the patient's care and future work in diabetes should focus on medication adherence lifestyle modification and improving the compliance so that we can bring the a1c less than 7 and we can change the status of our country from the diabetes capital of the world to the diabetes care capital of the world thank you very much